Welcome back everybody. In today's video we're building a test load for these new battery packs I'm getting. Uh, what this is here is a water heater element in a setup that is going to keep it cool. I'm going to walk you guys through how I'm building this and go over some of the details as to why I'm using this for this purpose. So as you can see here I have some basic plumbing parts and these are available from Ace Hardware. Up here I have a PVC fitting that is going to allow me to connect onto a garden hose and that goes into a 3 quarter inch by 1 inch adapter which then goes into a galvanized T with a water heating element threaded in from one side. From there we go into a 1 inch nipple at 6 inches long followed by a 1 inch by 3 quarter inch reducer and finally into a ball valve that is a 3 quarter inch thread on one side back to a 3 quarter inch garden hose on the other end and this is a quarter turn type shutoff valve and I prefer these over the other ones because you can quickly shut off the water in the case you need to do so in a hurry. If I go ahead and unthread this heating element here on the back You'll see that this is a simple water heating element and this is rated for 2000 watts at 48 volts DC. I have a simple Anderson connector wired on to the back of this heating element as you can see here. So I've gone ahead and taken this apart and put Teflon tape on everything as required and I went ahead and glued this as well so now this is ready to thread in the top and I can place my 6 inch by 1 inch nipple in the side and I can tighten down this fitting on the top with an inch and a half end wrench. And then I can tighten down this pipe nipple with a pipe wrench. And since this is in a vise, it's really easy to just grab this and get it tightened right up. And now I can put my reducing fitting on the end. I went ahead and threaded on my shutoff valve using a pair of channel locks and now we're ready to install our heating element. So since this heating element has an o-ring I don't need to apply teflon tape but I could go ahead and get this in and it's a pretty tight fit and I can go ahead and tighten it down. And I have a nice inch and a half end wrench that I can use to snug this down nice and tight so it doesn't leak. So now I've got this installed on our utility sink and the water is on all the way on cold and I can now open this valve and I have a hose on here because otherwise it would spray out and make a bunch of noise but I can easily regulate the amount of water coming out and this is crucial because I want to keep this heating element at a constant temperature that way the resistance of it doesn't change throughout our test. Now all I need to do is connect on my test battery to this Anderson connector and we'll be ready to go. So I've pulled the heating element out of the contraption that I've built and I'm going to go ahead and probe across the first element because this is actually two elements and I have 2.5 ohms and if I probe across the second element I have 2.5 ohms which means we can configure this in three different ways we can configure it for approximately 1.2 ohms or we can also configure it in series for 5 ohms or we can use just one element for that 2.4 to 2.5 ohms that we just measured. Now one thing to note is that this ohms reading is not a very accurate ohms reading because in this case the resistance of the leads comes into play and that can skew our measurements pretty well. In a later video I'll cover four wire ohms measurements and we'll test this element on a very precise HP meter and go from there. So I'm going to reconfigure this heating element for a 500 watt setup so that way we can do a nice long capacity test on our battery pack. And I'm going to go ahead and place a couple of washers on here and put this jumper so that the two elements are in series. Now this is one element and this is one element. So by connecting them like this they're effectively in series and I don't need the second jumper so I can actually go ahead and stack these up just so I get some better conductivity. And then on my other two leads I can connect my positive and negative outputs like so. Now I had a heck of a time finding a terminal for these studs that would fit a number 8 wire so I took a flat spade type connector and went ahead and drilled a hole in it that would fit over these studs. 
Now finally I could take a 930 seconds nut driver and tighten down all of these terminals. Now you'll see if I take a ohms reading across my Anderson connector I have 4.5 ohms. So if I plug this 4.5 ohms resistance into a ohms law calculator at a voltage of 56 volts I should have about 12.4 amps and about 690 watts of power. So I'm going to go ahead and install this element back in the contraption and take a power reading in that application. Real quick, there is obviously a slight danger working with a battery pack and live power next to the sink. But if you're careful, you should be fine. But I take no liability for what you do. So obviously the meter here on the battery pack is off by just a little bit, but that's okay because we have a good meter to reference off of. So if I shut off this battery charger and shut off the breaker, I can disconnect this Anderson connector and connect it to my heating element. Now make sure you do this not under load because you may have an issue if you do that. And now with my meter set on amps DC, I can clip it over the leads. So as you can see, I'm pulling 12.9 amps and I'm down to about 57.3 volts. And one thing to remember is as soon as you turn on the breaker, you gotta turn on the water. I almost forgot that. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and turn on the bell icon. And if you thoroughly enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And other than that, I'll be around making more videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.